Hi everyone! In this video, we are going to learn what is client-server architecture and how it affects REST API testing. Let's begin. The formal definition sounds like this. The client-server model is a distributed application structure between the providers of a resource or service called servers and service requesters called clients. For us, it's important that there are two independent components, a client and a server. We need to learn roles and characteristics of each of them separately, and then learn how the communication happens. Let's start from the server side. And again, I like to start with definitions. A server is a piece of computer hardware or software that provides functionality for other programs or devices called clients. First of all, the server is the computer hardware. Every page and every app on the Internet is stored somewhere on a remote server. A remote server is not so mystical after all, it's just a part of a remotely located computer. So, for example, Google Maps server is a machine where maps and images of the entire planet live. Most likely, the entire planet is too much for one machine, but anyway, you got the point. Google has a lot of powerful servers. If compared to your laptop, you have the same machine, but you need to store only thousands of images. Because of that, you have, let's say, 500 gigabytes of disk space in total. It is enough for you. And the server, as we said, stores way more information. Because of it, it can have, let's say, five hard drives within two terabyte each. And it is only one machine. Another difference is that your laptop has only one user and the server can serve millions of users. Because all other characteristics like CPU, cores, amount or RAM are very different. The server is like a laptop, just more powerful and reliable than standard personal computers. The machine runs 24 hours per day. For now, it is enough about the hardware. Let's check the server software. And again, on the software side, the server is not as different as you think it is. On your laptop, you have an operating system, let's say Windows. It helps you to work on the laptop, show windows, mouse cursor, buttons, input fields, images, everything. And with the UI and controls, you can manipulate data, leave a review of your favorite coffee shop and unload a story where you drink coffee. You got the point. By the way, if you don't know this icon, shame on you. Just kidding, sorry. The server has the operating system as well. It can be the Windows operating system, but most likely it will be Linux. Anyway, the operating system will do for the server the same as it does for you. Provide it an ability to process, operate and manipulate the data. And run one or more programs, as it is set in the definition. A server is a piece of computer hardware or software that provides functionality, often called services, such as sharing data or resources among multiple clients or performing communication for a client. What kind of services? First of all, it can provide you with a map and show where you are on the map. Find the best route when driving. Find places to eat and things to do around you or when you travel. All those features which you use every day are called services. So, there are a lot of cool and interesting programs which we want to use. Even more, all those features are created on purpose so people or other programs can use them. But the problem is that those are on the server hardware, and the server can be stored in US California. But you, the end user, can be anywhere else in Europe, South America, Asia, Africa, Australia, even in Ocean. And to use this feature, you will need to use a powerful server computer on your own. You will need to travel to the US and require a visa, it is uncomfortable. Don't worry, humanity solved this problem a while ago. We have the internet and we have client applications. And it is time to talk about the client side. What is the client? The definition says the following. A client is a piece of computer hardware or software that assesses a service made available by server. Sounds similar to the server definition. 
After all, as we said before, the server is the powerful hardware, but still the same hardware as the client. The difference is that on the client side, it can be a computer, smartphone, watch, or any other physical device. On that hardware should be a specific software which can assess a service. The client can be as simple as the web browser. Or it can be some native app like Google Maps in the Play Market, which you download on your phone. It can be any other program written for the same purpose, like Postman. The purpose of a software should be to assess a service made available by a server. The last part which was missed here is you, an end user because actually you are the one who uses all client apps which assess services made by servers. But mostly when people say the client, they mean the program, like the browser. Let's put it all together to see how communication works. Let's check a simple scenario from the user's perspective. You, as the end user, have a phone with Google Maps app open. The client is the Google Maps app in this case. As usual, in tutorials created by me, you want coffee. So you need to find a coffee shop nearby. You enter coffee shops into the search field. Once you did that, the client app, Google Maps on your phone, initiated a request to the server. We will talk about technical details in the next video. Let's talk in plain English for now. So the Google Maps app sent in a question, a request. I need a coffee shops in this area no further than 500 meters. This user is lazy and won't go further, or something like that. The server receives the request. And as we said, there is a server program. Its main functionality to accept requests from the client, do some magic and send answers, the response with the service data back to clients. In our case, magic is take data, coffee shops, G code and limit 500 meters most likely run a query in the DB and find this data. And then send a response back to the client, Google Maps app. In our case, data in the response is geocodes, coffee shops names and images. When the client, the Google Maps app on your phone receives the data, it processes it and displays icons of the coffee shops on the maps on your screen as there were geocodes of the coffee shops in the response. So that is how the client server model works. There are server with powerful hardware devices with software programs called services. And there are a lot of clients who want to assess the server programs. Each client sends a request to the server and receives the response back. But if you will check the schema carefully again, you can see that there is something missed there. The thing about which this course is, the API itself. Let's put it back there. In the previous video, we discussed that API is part of a server site. And to learn about what part the REST API plays in all of this, we need to learn the next REST principle, the uniform interface. Thank you for your watching. If you like coffee or coffee shop, leave a thumbs up. If not, thumbs down. See you in the next video.